My name is Banan, first year PhD. I've been just that no probably six months in the session. I'm Ensway, I'm a first year PhD in the market. I'm in the session. I'm Vinesh, and I just came here for this. Uh, so I'm, I'm Raul, yeah, I would say I've been staying in machine learning a little bit, I guess. Yeah, I just finished a master's in computer science, uh, specializing in machine learning and software development. So I would say probably I know a little <laughs> hopefully, right? So yeah, so um, yeah, a, a lot of people just hear machine learning, right? So uh, I got to say, what's the first thing that comes to your mind? Anybody have an idea? Like a lot of people, this is what they think, right? Yeah, they think like Skynet's going to come out or the Terminator is coming or whatever, the Matrix or whatever. But yeah, it, I would say machine learning, it's a, something more, more interesting than all of this, right? A, obviously, we're not going to get to this. I think so, right? So I, I would say a lot of times everything tends to get a, like, a, 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 they come out as buzzwords, right? And they, people tend to confuse all the like the different uh, names for it. Right? So like you can see, machine learning falls under under AI, right? And then uh, deep learning falls within machine learning, right? So they're all interconnected, right? And then uh, you can say uh, yes, it's the capability of a, like like the word says, right? Machine learning, it's going to learn something, right? Uh, if you want to go a little bit more technical about it, right, you can say that you can talk about experiences and past and measurements and all that, right? So, yeah, that pretty much how it falls into it, like the, the, the whole definition, right, like rather quickly, right? Um, so, like, uh, yeah, uh, today you will see like machine learning all over the place. We'll see it like a, a Facebook uses it, Google uses it a lot. Uh, you'll see it in the recommendation systems, uh, spam filtering. So it, it's just all over the place. Uh, a lot of people will say, like, yes, machine learning just came out like last last year or five years ago, right? And they actually machine learning has been uh, here for a very long time. I think uh, before they used to be called like uh, intelligence systems or whatnot. But then uh, one of the, one of the things about a uh, machine learning or the AI spectrum, right? It has become very popular in the last couple of years, and it's mostly because of uh, the increase in, 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 in power of computers, right? So like obviously now, a, your phone can do something that probably a pen in one computer could not do before, right? So like a researchers, they, they, they had to gain a access to like these big, big computers that they used to like occupy a whole room just to do something that we can do probably on our phone today. Right? So this is why machine learning has become so popular recently. Uh, one thing that you will see, uh, one, one example where you will find machine learning is uh, Netflix, for example. Um, I, I'm pretty sure everybody knows what it is, right? So, so the way it works is like uh, you come here, right, and uh, you choose movies, and uh, according to those movies, uh, they'll find somebody that has watched uh, similar movies or they have the similar likes of what it is that they like. And then uh, based on that, that's, gonna, that's, gonna, that's, gonna, that's, that's how they're going to start recommending movies for you, right? So every time you go in, 
there's a recommendation of something that you're probably going to like. Um, yes, theoretically, this will work, uh, but it's not that good all the, all the time. Like, let's say, me, for example, Netflix thinks that I like uh, to watch uh, princess movies and Disney movies and that sort of things, but that's because like, my daughters, they like to go on my Netflix account and look at that sort of stuff. But yeah, that's a pretty much high level, like a, what, a, what the recommendation systems are. And they, yeah, like they, they just a, divide into different sections of the like, person might be looking at. You might a, find a, movies more geared towards a, females, right? like drama, romance, that sort of thing. A, towards males, you might like a, action or suspense or a horror movies or whatnot, right? So this is more or less like how, how it goes. The same thing happens, let's say, for example, you go in, the, in Google, right? It will start learning on pretty much a, the type of a pages you like to to go to, right? So uh, when you do a search, it'll be, it, it'll be, it'll do its job a lot quicker, right? So there's actually a paper I found online in, and it talks about how the, the whole uh, Netflix experience works. Uh, a lot of people will say um, it's a KNN in the background, uh, the K nearest neighbor, that's, that's what it's called. But it's a, it's a little bit more involved. So it, it, if anybody has a chance, just look for it. It's like Netflix, a recommendation system. So yeah, so um, a, a lot of it, it's like um, we, we, we can decide, we, we can say like, what's the difference of how a computer learns, right? Usually the way we learn is like, uh, we'll go from the top-down approach, right? So they, you can do a lot of the deduction, right? So like, let's say if we go outside, right, and it's raining, well, we might need to carry an umbrella, right? Because otherwise we're gonna get wet, right? <laughs> but yeah, a computer is not gonna be approach it the same way. A computer is just probably gonna see like what, what kind of information is out there, right? Do some sort of model or some sort of a reasoning of what's gonna happen, right? And then a make it sort of an approach there, right? So that would be the bottom up approach, right? So that's the inductive reasoning, right? Of what a uh, um, it's a seen that in, in with the machine learning, right? So during all of this, right, we're gonna have a couple of components, right? So we're gonna have a generalization. A, this is a how well our model is a, it's gonna perform with our data that we feed into it. We're gonna have our data. Usually the way a, a, we work around with data is a, we have our whole data set of data a, of information. And we usually divide it uh, into like two different parts. Uh, obviously, we're not, uh, we need to train our, 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 our model, but we also need to test it. So usually the way we break it down is like, I don't know, 60, 40, we use 60% of our data more or less, or 70, it all depends on what kind of information we're, we're handling. And then uh, we'll use the other 30% for testing. Uh, we'll create a model with all of this, and we will use a, some sort of algorithm to create our model. So pretty much high level, this is how it, it works, right? Um, we have three different types of uh, machine learning uh, problems, I would say, and this is roughly how it is uh, divided, right? Um, the first one, which is supervised learning, I would say this is the one uh, where most of the people have uh, gone into. Uh, a lot of times uh, you'll see supervised learning uh, for classification or regression problems. It all depends on the, once you start going into all of these problems, like you'll see that there's not like one silver bullet for everything, right? Uh, you'll, you're gonna need to uh, learn like a lot of tools throughout your process, right? And depending on what it is that you're trying to do, depending on what kind of data that it is that you're working with, right, you're going to have to um, use different tools. So uh, pretty much uh, one of the things about supervised data is that you have a, your data label. Like you say what it is that your data is, it's doing, you say what it is that uh, you want out of it, 
let's say for example a you have a you have stock prices or you have a some sort of a let's say in security you know which way what, what's spam for you so that sort of thing is like a, you create labels for it and that's what it would be your y's for example that's your alpha and then a, the data that would be your x for example so this would be like the, the input, the, your X, you create a model, and then you have a, your output over there, and then the, after that you create a, some sort of testing, like what I said before, like you would um, divide your data and the input and in training and testing, sorry. And then it, depending on what it is that you want to do, right, you can have like different algorithms that you're gonna work with. Right, and then um, yeah, so you create your uh, your predictive model based on the both input and output. So roughly, this is a lot of what a supervised learning is. Um, let's say, has anybody heard of linear regression, for example? Um, does anybody want to see examples right now, or do you want me to leave them for the end? Okay. Okay. Sure. So then, in, let's see. Okay, so here, for example, this is, um, I have my data, right? Let's say I have, a, I have a set of data that talks about alligators, right? And I have more or less the, the length of the alligator, and depending on that length, they're going to have a certain weight. So then the, I just go and I, you what, how the data looks out in a, a scatter plot, for example. Just by looking at this, I can say, well, that more or less, if I do a linear regression, that's more or less going to help me. And if, uh, depending on the problem that I'm doing, right, I want to uh, more or less predict um, the, the weight of the, of the alligator based on the, based on the, on the length, right? So then uh, I go in here, I create, oh, sure. One more. Okay, so here I'm looking at my data, right? So I'm just gonna have like a, the, the length and the weight of my alligators that I'm looking for, right? So then a, I go in, looking at the data, I can see that I'm gonna do a linear regression, right? That's the, pretty much the tool that I'm gonna have under my belt and that's gonna help me with the problem that I have. In, I come in and in R, for example, if I wanted to do a linear regression, well, like usually the, the languages that they use for this, it, it could be R, it could be Python, there's Java. There's like a couple of languages you can work with, and they, right after that, they have some uh, libraries that they can help. They can help you with these, but uh, a lot of times they, you have to pretty much design your own like, uh, uh, algorithms, right? So that's when it gets uh, interesting, I would say. But like, right, if we're just using the plain library like this, right, it, it can help you uh, understand pretty much what's happening in, in the background. So like here I come, right, and the create my linear model is here with, the, with that, I just call it an R. And then the, I'll have the, this is what I want to have out, out of, uh, out of the linear model, and then these are the terms that I'm putting in, right? So then based on the weight, I'm gonna have a length. So that's pretty much the idea, right? And then if, after creating my model, I go in and I graph it. So then it, with the linear regression, right, it's just gonna throw a line from my data, and then it's, pretty much going to pinpoint like a, an answer for me. And this is, this is one of the most interesting things about machine learning. 
yes, you can do prediction, you can do classification, you can do a lot of things with machine learning. Right? It's not going to be 100% accurate, right? It's going to be an estimation. So that's one of the first things that you have to take into consideration, right? So like a, if you're going to do like a stock prices, for example, or that sort of thing, right? It's never going to be like 100% accurate, right? Like it's not a, like a crystal ball that will tell you like the, the winning numbers of the lottery or something. Like you can get a lot of things from here, but like it won't be 100% accurate. So then I go, I go in here, right? I create a linear regression based on the data that I, that I have, right? And I want to do a prediction, right? So like let's say I want to do if my alligator weighs like a 5.5 pounds, which is what I have over there, what is going to be my length, okay? So just by looking at this, okay, I have a typo here, but so just by going with this, if I have 5.5, I just go up into my line, and I can see it's more or less going to hit here, and it's more or less going to be around here, right? That's roughly saying, like, that's, that's, that's going to be my answer, right? So I can see over here that the answer that I get back is this, right, without doing much calculation. A lot of times I won't be do plotting while I'm doing all these processes, like a, here just for, to show you guys how, like, I, I threw the, the graph there, right? But then in, let's say, this will do, yeah, so this is more or less the, the idea of what a, a linear regression does. Then the, um, the other problem that I had was a, this is for the second part, so let me continue here. Okay, so that was more or less supervised learning. Like, you, have, you already know what your data is, you already know what it's going to be, right? So in this case, like, I already knew what my a, what, what weights are, I already knew what my length is. So I, like, I just told it, okay, learn from this, from this information, right? So whatever information I give you afterwards, right, you can pretty much tell me how much my alligators are going to weigh, right? I could say like a, I could predict like how many, like let's say spam on the, on the email that I get. I could predict a lot of things, right? Um, so, and then I can do, I can do like the use of a lot of different algorithms and it will depend on how much a, a experience you have with these, you're gonna go and Go ahead and use them, right? And the next type of a machine learning. Okay, sorry. So um, this was uh, what we were talking about before, right? Like we're gonna have our training data, the learning algorithm, we create the model, we test our data, and we get our accuracy, right? So we'll see how well our uh, our model performed, and then um, it's very rarely going to be 100%. It'll be, it'll be an estimation of what it is that we're trying to get right. But it, obviously it'll perform better than a human. But it, this is where it, a lot of the magic happens in the background and the, you have like a, these new careers coming out which would be like a data analysis, data science and whatnot, right? And that um, these people, they work a lot into doing work with this. And uh, this is very interesting. So, like, this is more or less where, where I'm trying to go to. I don't know if you've heard of this type of work before, but, but yeah, it's, I would say it's very fascinating. Though. So, one of the things that uh, we saw before, right, with the uh, linear regression that I did, right, I could have my uh, my data, right, and I could say, yes, I could probably just throw a line there and I'll do a prediction, right. In a line, the line that where I do my prediction, right, it, depending on what it is, how my data looks, right, it's not always going to look straight, 
let's say for example, I can have three different examples here of what my what, what my model is uh, throwing the estimation that comes out from my from a from my response, right? If I go in and I say like a, in my the example that I showed you, like the the length was going to be like four something, right? Let's say if I say instead of saying four, I'm saying like three, right? I'm underfitting. That means that I'm not getting to that uh, answer correctly, right? It, it means that I probably didn't learn enough from my data. I could go, I could go and I could do a prediction that it would be just right. But then uh, I could also go and do something like that's called overfitting. Let's say uh, I learned too much from my data, right? Let's say you go and uh, you study for a task and you study all the examples. But all you do is memorize, right? If you do memorization on all these problems that you had, it, they probably change the numbers for something in the past, and then they, you won't know what to do, right? So that's pretty much what happens when you do overfitting, right? You'll do well on your training data, but you will do really bad on your test data. So then it, you'll enter like a, a whole bunch of problems afterwards, like they will have low variance, high variance, and if you do overfitting, for example, right, instead of fitting the full side, you'll be like all over the place. So I mean, there's a, a lot of things that can happen with your prediction, but with a little bit of experience, right, and a, a little bit of knowledge, you can fix it sometimes. So then uh, we go into the second part of what uh, the different, uh, like the the other classification of machine learning, this would be unsupervised learning. In supervised learning, we're like saying what our data is. In this part of machine learning, uh, we do a lot of clustering. We go and we just say, okay, model, here's our data. Can you tell me something about it? Okay, so in this part, I go in and I can have something like this. So there's a, um, does everybody know what the iris data set is? No? Okay. So the iris data set is this a data set about flowers. Okay. So let's see. The iris data set, I have a, something that talks about um, the petals, the petal length, the petal width. A, here, over here, it says the, the class of petals or the class of flowers, right? And they talk about the, have you worked with the iris before? Mm -hmm. what, what's sepal? Sepal is like the... It's like the color mm -hmm. Oh, okay, okay. Okay, okay. So, okay, so then uh, let's say I go in, right, and I, Obviously, the first thing that I do is like I try to graph my, my, my information, right, and I try to see what it is that I have, right? So I go in the scatter plot, and this is pretty much what I get. Uh, right now, in this example, I'm just looking at the length and the, and the width of the petals. So it's more or less similar to what we're looking before at the, at the aggregator, right? So then I have my data there, right? I'm not telling my, I'm not gonna tell my model very much about it, right? I'm just gonna t tell it, okay, here it is. Can you separate it for me, right? So then uh, here I have something called uh, a k-means approach. So I'm gonna come here and I'm gonna grab the iris data set and I'm just gonna grab the third and the fourth a column from my data set, which they talk about the pedal width and the pedal length. And then the, I'm just telling it, based on the information that we saw up above, I just, I'm just telling it divided in three parts, right? Because I know there's a three species of a flowers, okay? And then the, it does this magic, right? And then I come out with, excuse me? Oh, um, it's it's gonna start at a, a I have a twenty random sets that it's coming out from from there. 
So I'm dividing it like in chunks of 20. So let me. So randomly takes chunks of 20? Yes, yes. But I mean, like, a, let, me, let me run the. So, so I mean, like, a, that's one of the nice things about the, these uh, libraries that they give you a lot of options, right? But sometimes these libraries, they, they will not give you exactly what it is that you need. So then you need to do these by hand, right? Uh, hopefully, fingers crossed, like they give you everything you need, and then you don't need to go and like uh, design uh, uh, an algorithm to do like a uh, clustering, right? And so let's see. Yes, yeah, so I don't have the the other half of my my screen here. Okay, so here's the data. Do my seed here. Do my clustering. Okay, so here. Okay, so uh, let's see. When I did uh, here the head iris, right? It, it was um, over here in this part of the of my screen, which is not showing, right? It shows that uh, there's uh, three types of uh, species. Uh, it's. I, I, I have the graph here at the, at the end. I'll, I'll show you that. So is it that you're kind of guessing? What yes. So so like um, here here in this part. Well, the the legends also. But like okay. So from the data, right, I do have a little bit of information, right? I know there's three three different types of species within my data, right? So then I want to know like the. What, what types of, uh, like, of all these dots or all these uh, appearances in my data of every species, right? I want, to, I, want, I want the model to tell me what each one is, right? So then, like, I could say divided into four parts. I could say divided into five parts. But in this case, since I know I'm going to have three different uh, classes, right, I'm just dividing it into three, okay? Uh, after I do my clustering here, right, uh, I get that it divided into like three different parts. I have 50 that's a cosa, uh, 48 that versicolor, and 46 that's a uh, virginia. Like I said, right, it's not going to be like 100% accurate. Right? So in this part over here, I right, found four that's uh, from something else. I found two that. So then the. Um, when we graph it over here, these are the clusters that it gave me, right? So the first one is going to be that one over there, the, the one in the bottom, and that's going to be Setosa. The second cluster over here, that's going to be Versicolor, and the third one's going to be Virginica. It, obviously, this is like already planned this ahead of time, right? So like I can go ahead and I can also a graph. Like, like I already knew the answers, right? Like, if I tell you what's two plus two, right, I already know it's going to be four, right? So this is more or less a, right? Obviously, I just fed it the data, right? and I told it it divided for me, right, and tell me what, what, what you see, right? So it's going to do its work for me, right? And they, like I said, right, this a, in this type of a uh, machine learning, right, uh, you don't have the answer necessarily, right? Like you just divide it, and you try to see what kind of information comes out of the, your evaluation. Right? So you just interpret the data based on the, the data. So this is what unsupervised learning does. So then um, this is the third part. Um, not many people hear about this, but uh, the third part is uh, called reinforcement learning. I, I would say this is the, the part um, that's mostly interesting, at least to me, right? I would say it's very interesting to me, right? Because uh, everything uh, pretty much uh, goes back to what the Bellman equation is, that you have like a current value, you have a you have a future value. And what, what that means is like, um, let's say you do something like uh, you buy stock, and you're going to do something, let's say, you, and then uh, let's say you make a 100%, like 100% of what your value was at the beginning, right? So then you know that for an action, 
that you do, you're going to have a, a reward, right? So then if that pretty much goes into, like, this is one example of what the, the reinforcement learning is, and the, this is to learn, right? And let's say, for example, we, we, we have a, an initial value, right? We do observations, and then we do an action. Then from that action, we'll have a, a future state and a reward. Like, let's say every time you do something, uh, you'll have a, a reward for something. So then one of, the, one of the nice things about this is that like, uh, the, um, the machine is learning, right? It's going to learn. Like, okay, if you do something good, you'll get a nice reward. If you do something bad, you'll get a bad reward. So that's nice about this, and does everybody, everybody knows what deja vu, deja vu is, right? So deja vu is like when you remember things from the past, right? Okay, so with this, you do something that's probably the opposite, which is you can do a hallucinations. So then in, a lot of times, like let's say I've, a, I've worked with this, a, doing a studies with the, a, with stock stock prices. Like if, let's say if you're studying the market, like, like a, if it's gonna be very expensive if you're trying to do all these movements of money, all these trades and whatnot, because you're playing around with it, with money, right? So like let's say I do three buys or something, right? And the machine starts learning about it, right? I can do hallucinations. And let's say we did 50 trades, right? But from these, hallucinate a thousand trades into the start right? And it's going to learn like what to do or what to do. It'll save us time. It'll save us money. Well, time is money, right? But then um, you can also do all some other neat things like this, for example. Um, Mostly reinforcement learning, you'll see it. Is that this program can go and simulate what Mariner is doing, right? So then, um, obviously, you can see a, a lot of other examples that happen here, right? So you just let it run, right? It'll start learning, and it'll see when it gets killed by the by the Koopas, right? It gets killed by the turtle when it falls into a hole or whatnot, right? So then from all these hallucinations that it starts uh, performing, right, it'll start doing all these, uh, uh, it'll know from the rewards that, it, that it's getting, right? But here you can see the direct reward that it's getting, right? So you can see the differences, right? So it'll get eventually to the end, right? You'll find like all sorts of uh, examples like this. So then this is the idea more or less of the how the computer goes in and it learns on its own, right? Yes, it's, it, it is going to need a lot of help from us, right? But then it, I, don't, I don't think it's ever going to get like to the Skynet example that I showed you at the beginning. Right? So I mean like, had, had anybody seen it, something like this before? No. So yeah, like you, you can use it on all sorts of things, right? Like the, my experience. The video games examples that like a lot of people can understand from it, right? So then, um, let's see. Okay, so so based on what it is that I, I, I've been talking to you about, right? Like I just brought like three little examples in, oh, and I wanted to ask you guys. Okay, have you guys seen the new? Uh, there's some new Volvo commercial on TV that talks about like it shows uh, how it stops in front of the little girl. Uh, has anybody seen this one? Yeah. I was asking this question, and I, and I told her, like, is this machine learning, right? And she's like, well, no. Okay. And then I'm like, I was, like, if you see the commercial, right, like, it's a camera in front of the car, right, and it sees an object there, and it stops, right? 
So actually, I started thinking about it like, yeah, it's, it's not machine learning. Why? Like, let's say, for example, in my car right now, if I start backing up, it has a sensor, and it starts beeping if it senses something there, right? So obviously, the car is not learning anything. It's just a sensor there, it sees something, and it stops, right? So no, it's not machine learning. Um, does everybody know what Watson is? Yes. Okay, so yeah, they had a Watson Jeopardy and, and they, they bought a, they, they beat like they, all these people and they won all this money, right? But a, it's a machine learning. And well, this professor at Ryerson, they, she was telling me, they, no, it's not machine learning. Why? Because they, let's say you feed all this data into your computer, right? Uh, all you're doing is pretty much indexing the information for the answers. So it would be like if you have a, um, a phone book in your, in your computer, right? That's not machine learning either, right? So it's a, it depends on what they use and what it is that it's doing. Uh, let's say the new iPhone X is coming out right now, or when it came out, and it has the face recognition part. Would that be machine learning? And the answer for that one is yes. Why? Well, it supposedly, uh, I don't know if anybody saw the presentation, right? Uh, during the presentation, the example uh, did not work. And why was that? Well, you, uh, you, need to, you need to teach the phone, like, whoever, got, whoever was doing the presentation probably got the, the phone like five minutes before the presentation. Like, so the, the phone never, never got the opportunity to learn the person's face. Right, so that's why they couldn't unlock the phone. They, they are, uh, if you have a chance, just look at the presentation. Right? It didn't work for them. But yeah, this is an example of machine learning, right? Because the phone learns your face, right? And then it unlocks itself, right? So then uh, that's roughly, like, very quickly, like a magic trick what machine learning is, right? I don't know if anybody has some questions or... Yes? Uh, I have a question. This is more of a bad question. Oh, okay, okay. Well, um, I mean, you're going to find different things within uh, in your uh, the, the let, let, let's say okay, you do you do things right, and uh, uh, say you like a uh, going to a. Uh, like, let's say I want to come to Toronto, right? And uh, I ask you, what type of things uh, is it that uh, I can do in Toronto? Right? Let's say you like going to uh, music concerts, you like to go to movies, uh, you like to go to restaurants or whatever, right? Okay, so your answer of what to do in Toronto is going to be more or less related to that, right? So then your answer is probably going to be biased, right? So then uh, a lot of times, uh, the information when you get it, right, it could be biased in, in the way that maybe how they obtained the data, right, what it was that it, they, they were looking for. Uh, let's say um, if you want to show how great a company is, uh, you might have biased information in there. Right? So it depends a lot on the record on how you collect information. I don't know, like I've also heard, like let's say the, the books that they have an, an Amazon or these places, right? Like they have a, or in the, in the app store, right? Like so yeah, you'll have people that give like these uh, recommendations of, on the, oh yeah, this app is great and stuff. I don't know if you ever heard like, oh yeah, probably the developers went in there and they wrote all of this, right? So it depends a lot how you get this information. Uh, you can do some sort of like randomization. You can do sampling, for example, from your data, right? And try to like fix it. Um, like there's a lot of techniques you can do with your data, right? To try to improve. Yeah. I, I would say it depends a lot on, on your result and how it is that, like, what, what you see at the end, though. I mean, it's kind of difficult sometimes to like to just say, right? Because it depends. That's that's what I would say. It depends. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but uh, I mean, like, it, it goes on a case by case thing, right? It. Yeah, depends. Like, let's say in. 
like I don't know if anybody has had a chance to work with a time series analysis, for example, right? Uh, like let's say if you're looking at the amount of people that go into Union Station, for example, right? Uh, if you just look at a sample of a uh, people that go in the morning, for example, uh, you might say Union Station is always packed. But if you look at it that way, right, that would be a biased answer, right? Like, yeah, Union Station is not always packed, right? So let's say if you're if you're looking at like in a time uh, a time analysis of, of the information, right, you could probably do just random sampling, right? Like, depends, yeah, on what it is that you're looking for, right? And you can do different approaches on it. And any other questions or no? Okay. The what? Oh yeah, yeah, sure, sure. Okay, so like, yeah, obviously, uh, I was kind of cheating a little bit here, right? Because like I already knew, like I said, it was a for the the four species in there, but then here. Instead of three, you want it four, right? Okay. So then I do my table. Okay. And it divided like a versicolor, for example. Before, I think it was like 46 and two or something, right? So then this one divided in two parts, right? And this one divided into two parts as well. And this one stayed like, we know probably the answer to this one is like, Straight, like right on, right? And then uh, if I go here, so you, like, but, but I mean, I have more or less an idea of what it is that I want, right? It's not like I'm just gonna say, like, hey, here's the data, what do you like? I'm just like, how do you divide it? So I mean, like, like, we can do a lot of things with this. But this is like must it would depend on the on the problem, on the data that I'm working with, what it is that I want to learn from it. Okay. So then the, I go into like the like I said, like the different parts of machine learning. This is supervised. If I supervise something from the, the computer, okay, this is the data is this, this, and this, right? I'm to learn this, right? This looks just like Okay. Yeah. Yeah, and that's why I wanted to have the the examples in R this week because I knew next week's gonna be Python, right? So Yeah, is that is that the online? Um, the Yeah. Yeah, I remember when I was talking to me. But then, like, uh, before you guys started, 